everyone. Welcome to this civil engineering current news session on how to avoid catching COVID in a car. We are Swansea University's current news series and um, we're really thrilled to have you joining us. And without further ado, I will pass over to this evening's speaker. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, everyone. Uh, uh, I'm Chen Feng Li, uh, academic in Swansea University. Uh, I was a uh, uh, encouraged by my colleague uh, to deliver a talk to, as I understand, uh, potential students who are interested in doing civil engineering degrees. Uh, I am a professor in civil engineering. Or the topic of this talk is on COVID transmission in a moving car. I will draw the connection in a minute. So that's the topic of the car. Uh, the this short talk. I thought before I start the the talk. Uh, for tonight, I, I'd better show some connection of, from civil engineering. Uh, my background is civil engineering and construction. Uh, I teach uh, all my modules are in the civil engineering uh, portfolio. Uh, so the this animation just to show you an example of uh, a digital simulation for uh, the first one on the left. That's a diaphragm wall, uh, and the second one on the right. That's a, a I box test for fresh concrete. Uh, so simulation shows you uh, have people uh, to find out how fresh concrete behave uh, in a large structure where it's not possible to observe either with bare eyes or with other equipment. Concrete is a, a very robust but very tough material uh, to, to monitor, especially uh, when it is uh, fresh. So now uh, I come back to the topic for tonight. Uh, here is a brief summary for this study. Uh, not too long ago, back to the August time, there was a, a short BBC news about uh, a research that took place in my team. And that research studied uh, different measures uh, that can help to reduce or avoid virus transmission in a moving car. So the purpose of the study was to establish uh, how effective uh, ventilation uh, works uh, in a moving car, including the uh, built-in air conditioning system, opening uh, windows, uh, uh, in what way as well, in terms of uh, the pattern of uh, window opening and the duration of window opening. We also investigated the effect of uh, face covering and uh, uh, taxi screens. So that was the, the purpose. Uh, the method we use to perform these studies uh, is a numerical simulation. Uh, frankly speaking, there isn't, uh, there aren't many other methods that can safely study COVID transmission uh, without uh, uh, causing um, a high risk. Uh, the virus can't be detected in real time by any devices. Um, and uh, it's risky to uh, perform experiment uh, uh, with virus in uh, uh, uncontrolled environment. So worldwide, uh, there hadn't been an ex experiment done uh, because of these restrictions. However, simulation can help to uh, find out uh, information that could be quite useful. I'll show you in a minute. So in this situation, we studied uh, uh, different opening uh, window opening patterns. Each window is allowed to have three uh, positions, fully opened, half opened, and fully closed. We also checked the uh, cars moving at different speeds at three levels in this study, 5, 10, and 15 uh, meters per second, uh, which covers the typical speeds for city driving. 15 millimeter, uh, meter per second correspond to 34 miles per hour. Uh, we also checked face covering and uh, uh, AC system, uh, how they affect uh, the virus transmission in moving car. I'll skip the funding for now because we'll come back to that uh, uh, later. This short talk is uh, broken into four parts, uh, a, a, short, a quick introduction and then a model setup followed by the result and discussion. Finally, I'll summarize the conclusions. Since the end of uh, 2019, COVID pandemic has been ongoing for nearly two years. Um, WHO figure shows more than 200 million people have uh, 
uh, infected, and more than 4 million, probably close to 5 million by now, um, death figures. And that's still ongoing. Uh, also, with the new variants uh, coming out over time, uh, although people are getting vaccinated, it's looking more and more likely that humans would be uh, coexisted with virus for uh, a few more years. So in situation, it's necessary to investigate uh, if there are any measures uh, mankind uh, can, can take in day-to-day -day life uh, to reduce or avoid the virus infections. So in this particular case, we investigated the virus transmission in a moving car, which is a closed cabin and that makes social distancing very difficult. Uh, I come, come to the model setup. The tools, uh, research tool we use in this study is uh, the so-called uh, computational fluid dynamics. Um, it's a research field that was invented perhaps 50, 60 years ago. Uh, after these years, uh, th there are quite a few uh, well-established commercial tools available on the market. Uh, and there are many researchers, including myself, working in the fields. We also develop our own tools. Uh, these tools can tell you how flow behave uh, in a environment or engineering structure. Uh, the fluid can be anything. It could be air, like in this case, or could be concrete, uh, like what I showed earlier, or could be uh, something even more complicated, like the engine combustion. So you have a mixture of air, fuels, uh, with temperature changes, everything. Uh, so this is the model you can see in the slide. That's the very basic car. The reason we didn't uh, use massively the uh, high resolution model, as you've seen earlier in the previous slide, is purely due to computational cost. Obviously, we need to make sure the simplified model, which has a much higher computational uh, efficiency, gives a reliable result. We'll come back to that. So this car is built. This car model was built uh, towards uh, uh, a real car model. I think that was the Audi we started with. Uh, so the size is uh, realistic. Uh, the windows have three levels: uh, fully open, fully closed, and half open. Uh, four windows typically, so that gives uh, eighty-one combinations or configurations for the window opening patterns. Uh, in terms of, uh, uh, we also investigated the, the, the source of virus, and that can be uh, uh, placed either at the front of the car, so the driver side, uh, or can be placed at the rear of the car, so the rear passenger. To carry out the simulation, we place the car uh, virtually in a wind tunnel. So in this slide, you see uh, in the image, you have the car placed in a box, rectangular box, and that's uh, the geometry of the wind tunnel. As for many, any other simulation, you have to define your domain, and that domain count has to have a finite size. Uh, and we have chosen the wind tunnel, uh, a size that is sufficiently large, so that it gives a reliable result. Now we come to the uh, virus. Uh, COVID, after uh, heavy research by researchers worldwide, it's uh, confirmed that COVID virus is transmitted uh, mainly in three ways, uh, airborne routes and uh, uh, contact. Uh, the airborne routes uh, uh, divides into another two sub routes. Uh, one is a droplet uh, transmission, another one is aerosol transmission. So droplets refers to larger and heavier particles. Uh, they carry a lot of uh, uh, virus at a higher amount, so they're most infectious. But the good news is that uh, uh, these droplets, they uh, fall onto a floor or surface very quickly in, in, in a period of a few seconds. Or if uh, the, the environment allows, they evaporate very quickly, again, in a few seconds. So you are talking about five to 10 seconds, the droplet will no longer exist. Uh, and this is where the government worldwide had this two meter rule, uh, social distancing, how it was established. This is the time that allowed the droplet to fall onto the floor or disappear in the air. 
it took a little while for the researchers worldwide to confirm uh, aerosol transmission uh, are present. So aerosol represents tiny particles, smaller than droplet, uh, 10 to the power of uh, minus six, the typical size of your micrometers. And they uh, can uh, circulate in air uh, for a prolonged period. It has been proved that uh, virus, uh, even as this uh, uh, present in this size, uh, are still infectious, infectious, and uh, they remain infectious for at least an hour, maybe longer. There is no accurate data there. The third transmission route is the contact. Uh, I think there's a general consensus by now. The contact route uh, is a uh, far less varying compared to the first route. But then between the first route, droplet and uh, aerosol transmission, it's hard to tell which one dominate uh, and to what extent it dominates. We can only assume they are both uh, uh, critical or both main routes, not the general consensus, but the percentage between them, nobody knows. Uh, and in this study, uh, we focus mainly on uh, aerosol. This is because uh, the behavior of droplets is uh, uh, very well known. Uh, there's no argument there. Uh, the, the only thing remain unknown is there is uh, how much virus are carried by uh, droplets that affecting people and how, how much virus are carried by aerosol that affecting people, but that's not uh, uh, a question that can be answered by simulation. Another thing we have to uh, bear in mind is uh, uh, turbulence. So this is the main challenge of uh, uh, the study of uh, uh, fluids. Uh, flow is turbulent. Uh, some of you might have heard about Reynolds number. Uh, it's an a experimental uh, factor. Uh, typically, when it's greater than 1,000 or 2,000, you would say the fluid has the visible turbulence uh, present. Uh, when it's there, it makes everything uh, difficult because of the chaos uh, involved. Uh, fortunately, we have tools in engineering to tackle that. Uh, so we have a turbulence model built in this uh, study, and that will look after the turbulence. Uh, I won't go into uh, uh, too much more detail there. Uh, the last aspect for the modeling is uh, the, the grid or, or the mesh. So what do you do in simulating this system is uh, you, you have a bunch of equations uh, in the background built, built on top of uh, mathematics and physics, but you can't solve it by hand. Too complicated, no one can. Uh, uh, so computer can do it for you, but computer doesn't know equations. What the computer knows is numbers, uh, binary numbers. Uh, so you know to turn the mathematical equations into something that can be handled by computers, we have to uh, discretize the space into uh, grids, uh, like what I show in this slide. It's uh, basically a mesh uh, representation for the wind tunnel with the car placed in the middle. Uh, and each point in the space now has a coordinate, uh, 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 or we call that a node. And this node can carry uh, physical quantities. For example, we could uh, say, each node has the velocity of the air, it would have a virus density uh, concentration, and it would have a temperature, pressure. So everything uh, that present in the physics can be assigned to these uh, set of nodes uh, that are now uh, recognizable by computer. So that's the whole, uh, well, in simple words, how, how it works. Uh, after all of these models were set up, obviously we have a server uh, supporting all of these. We basically performed many, many simulations. In this uh, study, over 300 simulations. So what they are, we first checked the high speed one. So 50 meter per second traveling speed for the car. And we have a window set for three levels each. So 81 uh, configurations and we allow virus to be uh, imitated by either the driver or a uh, passenger sitting at the back. Uh, so that means 81 
multiplied by two, that's 162 configurations to begin with for one traveling speed, 15 meters per second. Uh, I won't go into the detail for the other simulation. We'll come back to that. Uh, so what happens then is uh, we simulate how air flow in the car at this particular traveling speed uh, for each uh, window opening, closing um, pattern. And then we have various uh, presenting in the air uh, uh, imitated by, by the source, either the driver or the passenger at the back. And, and this, it's a fixed amount of variables get emitted into the car uh, for half a second. And then we run the simulation for a walk clock time of 10 seconds. And then we go back to check how much variables remain in the car uh, to tell the efficiency of uh, removing errors from the car by, by this measure. Uh, so let me repeat, we have variables emitted for half a second and then uh, run a simulation for walk clock time for 10 seconds. After that, we check how much variables uh, are still present in the car. So out of the first uh, 81 simulations, so driver uh, creating variables, um, we basically have uh, uh, 81 results and this First data table shows uh, there are seven window opening uh, configurations. Uh, they are so effective after 10 seconds, there, there is less than 10%. So this R10 means percentage of virus remaining. So less than 10% virus remain in the car after 10 seconds. There are seven window opening configurations. Obviously there are worse ones like the last four. Most of them are with window fully closed or just one open you don't have uh, much effect in terms of uh, removing variables from the car. Uh, <clears throat> to show what they are, this bar chart shows uh, the top seven patterns. All of them are effective, uh, removing variables by at least 90%. Uh, this little icon here shows you the uh, pattern of window opening. So uh, the most effective one is this traveling speed, 15 meter per second. It only have two window open, uh, open, and the other two fully closed. So this says, uh, uh, at least for this traveling speed, having all four window open uh, is not the best uh, solution. Uh, uh, to have just two of them give you the best result. And the second best is again, just two of them. Uh, so the best one is diagonal one, and the second best one is uh, the uh, parallel one. Just two. Uh, so the, the effect of uh, having all four windows uh, open, it's not bad. It's rank 11, but still it removed almost 90%, uh, let's say 88% of virus in 10 seconds. So the indication of this is uh, uh, the, 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 the effect of removing virus at 50 meter per second traveling speed is so good you, you, you basically open the window for 10 seconds, then uh, virus is gone, practically. So you don't have to keep it open all the time. So occasionally, 10 seconds is nothing. You press the button and press it again. That's 10 seconds. So uh, that's indicate uh, probably surprise the people. They might think uh, you, you need to keep window open all the time you know, to manage the risk. But at high speed traveling, 30 miles per hour or above, uh, occasionally opening is already sufficient. You cut it by 90%. Uh, that's more effective than, than, than vaccine already. Uh, so that's a good indication. From there, we also checked uh, the effect of uh, having virus created from the back by the passenger. Uh, then the result is not so optimistic. So this is again, uh, 81 simulations, we rank them uh, the best one, uh, it's about 20% remaining, so 80% uh, uh, removal, but there's only one of one pattern there. Um, and all the other ones, or the majority ones are, I mean, 40% left, 50% left. So it's not really effective. This tells uh, various 
uh, created from the back uh, is very uh, difficult, much more difficult to be removed from the car, whatever you do, uh, compared to a virus created uh, from the front zone of the car. And the best you can do is the first pattern or the first four or five patterns, they are almost same, 20%, around 20%. And you could see them, it's, uh, uh, there's no clear pattern there, but more or less uh, uh, all windows are open to, to some extent. Uh, that seems to indicate uh, open the more the better. Uh, uh, but between these two groups of results, what you can also conclude is that uh, sitting at the front is far safer. Uh, so if you have a passenger, better two of you both sit at the front. Uh, in that way, although you are closer from each other, but as long as you do the window opening thing, uh, the risk is uh, far better managed rather than having one at the front and the other one at the back. It's a, a fake, uh, secure feeling. It's, uh, it's more risky in that way. So now we have a, a full picture of uh, uh, the traveling speed of 50 meters per second. Uh, we could do the same thing for five meters and 10 meters per second. But then it's not necessary to do all of them by now because we already have a ranking for, from the first group. So to figure out uh, the, the more effective one or the interesting ones, we, we only need to do some of them. So we did the ranking and we picked the 38, top 38 of them to be studied. So instead of uh, simulating 81 uh, configurations for the other two speeds, we simulated 38 configurations for the other two speeds. And these are the top 38 configurations from uh, uh, the higher speed uh, study, 50 meters per second. Uh, so these two tables summarize the result, top five result from uh, five meters per second and the uh, top five result from uh, uh, 10 meters per second. Uh, as you could imagine, the slower the car travels, the less effective uh, it is by opening uh, windows. So at the really low speed, um, you do the same thing. You, you only remove about 50% uh, uh, virus from the car. But at the 15 meter per second traveling speed, 10 seconds, you remove 90% easily. The best pattern you remove 97%. Uh, 10 speed, 10 minute, uh, meter per second give you a result in the middle, uh, which is very effective as well. You're talking about 80% effective. Uh, urban traveling, uh, cars will turn frequently, uh, accelerate, decelerate frequently, so it travels at varying speed. To check the effect of that, uh, we simply took an average of the uh, uh, all patterns and then rank them. So this is the ranking for uh, all three traveling speeds. Uh, uh, you could see by opening, closing windows for 10 seconds, in general, you remove part, uh, various, um, about 70%, 70 to 75 percent, which is not bad, which is not bad. Uh, but this time, you the the pattern is that it looks like you open as many windows as possible. So most of the case, uh, everything is open. So the number two is uh, opening everything. Number one is uh, with just one of them half closed, and the difference is fairly small. You're talking about uh, two two and a half percent, and that difference you could well say that might be just the modeling error, and so pretty much they're the same. Uh, so that indication means um, urban traveling. Uh, cars traveling at relatively low speed, uh, accelerating, decelerating all the time, turns all the time. It's better to have all window open uh, to keep it simple. Uh, and in, in 10 seconds, it would remove virus by 70% uh, roughly. So that's the window opening uh, uh, study. I think the key conclusion is, is this. Sitting at the front is generally safer. At higher speed, traveling, open two windows are far better than having all four windows open. At uh, uh, lower speed traveling uh, in cities, the, having all four windows give the back open, give the better result. Uh, and uh, the, the effectiveness is this, 10 seconds, you remove 70% of uh, virus from the car straight away. 
So then we basically checked the effect of uh, face covering, how good or how bad that is. Uh, face covering, there have been numerous experimental studies uh, performed on face masks, how effective they are. Uh, surgical masks uh, reduce various emission by 90%, reduce uh, various intake by 70%. Uh, so in this case, we assume the various source, whether the driver or the passenger had a face covering on, surgical mask in this case. So the various emission get cut straight away by 90%, and then we check after 10 seconds what's happening in the car. So the result is that at five meters per second speed, without face covering, you're talking about 46% remaining, with face covering is 4.6% remaining. So it's more or less linear. So you cut it by 90% straight away. Uh, at uh, 10 seconds, uh, 10 meters per second, trend remains the same. Without face covering, you have 15% left. With face covering, you, you have 1.5% left. So that trend remains the same. Uh, the case change uh, vary when it comes to the uh, case of 50 meters per second. So without face covering, it's already very, very effective, 3% left. With that, it's uh, less than 1% left. So that difference is not significant anymore. Uh, so that means at higher speed, the ventilation through uh, opening windows uh, is already so effective. Uh, and that makes the face covering less essential or critical. But then for low traveling speed, the face covering it, it make a very big difference, uh, 10 times. The last study we did in this uh, in this work is to check uh, uh, taxi screen. Uh, I sit in one of the world government uh, advisory board uh, of COVID. Uh, from time to time, the, the board got questions uh, from the public. One of them was, uh, this time is not the public, it's from the taxi companies. <laughs> Uh, uh, whether or not taxi drivers are encouraged, should be encouraged to uh, install, if they haven't already, uh, install um, taxi screens. So there are three types of them. Uh, the manufactured fitted one, like this, uh, or the flex flexible one, like this, or the uh, semi-flexible or semi-screen, uh, like this one. These two can be installed by the driver himself or herself, and this need to be installed by the dealer. Uh, so how this will affect the value of transmitting the car, that's what we uh, want to know. So in this case, we basically place the screen represented by this red box. Um, the first uh, flexi screen and the last manufacturer installed screen, they have a similar effect because they cover the whole space between fr uh, uh, front and rear zone and only leave space at the leg level. Uh, the other one uh, in the middle from the first slides is a half screen. So it leaves uh, gaps everywhere around the screen and also on top and below the, the, the screen. So we essentially have two cases to check. We basically repeated the same simulation we did before at different, uh, 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 no, I think this time it was only 10 meter per second traveling speed to, to just to check how effective this rather than for three traveling speeds. But then we have different window opening uh, patterns and then we, we could rank them potentially. Uh, so this is a large data table for uh, listed 16 window opening patterns. We did more, I think we did 38. Uh, there's no, clear pattern when you check this window opening uh, configurations. Uh, and in terms of the various escape date from the car or front zone, rear zone, uh, for different screen type, no screen with a small screen or with a full screen. Uh, it's not really clear. It becomes easier to see what's happening after we took an average. Uh, the reasoning behind this is that uh, it's perhaps difficult in practice to maintain a single conf window configuration, knowing that both driver and passenger can control the window and they, they, they may well have different uh, preference. 
So then window gets open and closed, uh, let's say randomly. Uh, so then taking average perhaps makes sense. Um, at least give a, uh, a indication for the uh, average effect uh, in that case. Then it shows uh, uh, in average without any screen, you basically uh, have a uh, forty-five percent virus removed from the car after ten seconds, uh, and about half half left, twenty-seven percent left, uh, equally distributed in the front and rear zone. With a small screen, you have a uh, less particles or virus removed, so that's a 5% difference. And then you have slightly more trapped at the front, slightly less trapped at the rear, uh, rear back, uh, but both greater than the case of uh, no screen. When you have a full screen, you have further less particle escaped it. So only 34% uh, get removed by opening windows. Um, uh, but this time more trapped at the uh, back zone. Uh, so that indicate having a screen either small or large. It, it in general has a negative effect in terms of uh, getting virus out of the car. And uh, the larger the screen is, the more negative effect it brings in. Uh, and this, on top of this, by having a separate surface where virus can uh, attach to, it in increase the risk of uh, uh, contact uh, transmission. So overall, the study clearly uh, confirmed having a screen either small or large is not a good idea. Uh, if you already have one that can be removed, better remove that. If you don't have one, there's no need to install one. Uh, so that's the... Uh, conclusion. Uh, so this is my last slide. Uh, the, the, the main conclusion from this study is, uh, if I summarize it, uh, uh, one by one, first is sitting at the front is uh, uh, safer than sitting at the back, if you have that option to do so. Uh, opening windows is super effective uh, uh, for urban traveling. It's better to have all four windows open, but not necessarily constantly. You could do that on and off, and that gives you an effect of 70%. So 10 seconds will remove 70% of virus from the car. Uh, when it's traveling at higher speed, uh, above 30 miles per hour, uh, 10 seconds window opening with the right uh, configuration, that is, I have two window open, one at the front, one at the back, you remove at least 95% of virus straight away. So very effective. Uh, taxi screen is not so effective. Uh, better not to have one. Uh, wearing face mask is again very effective too. Uh, it basically cut virus by ninety percent uh, at lower traveling speed. At higher traveling speed, it's less effective uh, uh, because window opening. If you can do that, uh, it already reduces the risk uh, so much by over ninety percent. Uh, so that's uh, the end of my uh, talk for today. Ren, uh, would you like to take over? Great, thank you so much. Um, I will take this opportunity to stop the recording. So thank you everyone who's joined us uh, after the fact, um, and I hope you enjoyed.